Okay, please welcome the stage, Patrick Marlborough. Thanks so much, Laura. I like you a lot. You're very nice. Um, yeah, good day. Um, I don't want you thinking I've had like a series of small strokes. I am from Australia. This is just like how we talk, so apologies in advance if you can't understand anything. Um, I love registering the disappointment in people's faces here when I say I'm from Australia. Because I want the kind of a uh, name throwing like like sort of life crocodile Dundee kind of aesthetic, you know. And the uh, platonic ideal of the Australian man right now is Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> and I understand that I'm kind of like the alien resurrection aborted clone version of Chris Hemsworth kind of thing. And put another shape on the Barbie, mate. Like absolutely cooked. And I apologise in advance for that. Um, true fact about the shrimp on the Barbie thing, and this is true, I'm actually legally forbidden from putting any shrimp on any Barbie until I kill my father in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and that's why I'm living here in exile at the moment. But I love, I love being in America, it's fantastic. Um, Americans love Australians, and Australians love pretending to love Americans, it's great. Because yeah. um, we're all friends, you know, we're allies, you know. We're mates, it's mateship, that's what our countries are all about. You know why we get along so well, don't you? Do you guys know why? It's because we're dickheads, that's it. It's because we're the bad guys. You're Darth Vader, and we're your loyal Boba Fett. It's fantastic. The last 50 years of our relationship has essentially been every kind of college movie made in the 80s. And the global community is the goth kids trying to have a dance at their community center. And you're the rich kid that racks up like, we're gonna turn down the dance hall and my dad's gonna build an outlet mall where he sells drones that bomb Israeli goat herders or whatever it is. And we're just behind her as a little sidekick, like, fuck you, get him, boss. That's been it, 50 years. Last year's been a bit weird, soured a bit, been a bit peculiar. It feels now we're in like a harrowing Tarkovsky film, and you are looking at a suburban household through binoculars, and we're escape prisoners, and we're shackled to your ankles. And you're like, we're gonna go in the house and kill the family, and then wear the children's skins as masks. We're like, ha! Great idea, boss. Great plan. But what are we actually doing? What is this? What is happening right now with your country kind of thing? It's an uneasy tension. If I had one question as an Australian in uh, Trump's America right now, it would easily be, and please answer this, everybody knows, why have you revived the career of Mel Gibson? Seriously. Because... Do you know what it takes for Australians like not to claim a celebrity? Like we claim everybody. We say our Kate Blanchett, our Hugh Jackman. We say our Sam Neill and our Taika Waititi, our guy. You know, they're all from New Zealand. We just take them. That's our whole thing. For us to exile Mel, he has to be a true cooked lunatic, as we say back home. And because I'm walking around and I'm seeing these posters and these trailers when you're walking and you see trailers um, for uh, Daddy's Home Two everywhere, right? <laughs> a family Christmas film with Mel Gibson. And all I'm thinking is how absolutely perfect the casting of Mel Gibson as Mark Wahlberg's dad is. Because it's this beautiful sliding gradient of problematic. It's like, Mark Wahlberg, religious kook, dipshit, famously beat up an old Vietnamese man in the 90s, you know, bit of race crime in there. Oh, how could we like slide up? Who would be in that lineage, on that plateau? Hello, who's this? It's Mel Gibson, right? Absolutely, absolutely insane. Rabid anti-Semitic, wife beater, former alcoholic. I don't know about anymore. The beard maybe absorbs things. I don't know. Anyway, horrible man. He's so insanely religious that I think like Mel Gibson would like flagellate himself on Seth Meyers if you gave him the chance for like quoting from Revelations. You just gave him like thirty seconds, you know. And so I can't stop thinking of like. Who is the next? <laughs> right? Daddy's Home 3. Now, follow me here, because this is perfect, right? Marky Mark, Mad Mel, who's the next level of problematic? Come on. Woody Allen, you fucking got it. Woody <laughs> Allen. Thank you. Brilliant. No, definitely, because think about it. It would be an Easter movie, it'd be sort of Easter time, you know? And the whole plot would just be... Mark and Mel, because Will Ferrell and John Lithgow are gone, they, they want to put on a live version of the Passion Play to impress their pep pep, Woody Allen, and he's coming into town, and he's just like, the only reason my son is so anti-Semitic is because I'm his dad. That kind of stuff. It just writes itself. Mel just bursts in, like, hey, Dad, do you want to play Judas in our Passion Play? 
the only reason you want me to play Judas is because he also had glasses. I can see the entire thing in my head. <laughs> I desperately want that film to be mad. But it's crazy because I think in 2017 and how insane it's been, it truly is the year of Daddy's Home 2. We live in a Daddy's <laughs> Home 2 universe. <laughs> it's just all these old mad bastards who you just can't get rid of just floating back towards us. I was talking to my roommate the other day and he said, you know, Donald Trump is the voice of his generation. And he was taking the piss, as we say. But it's a really accurate thing to say about Trump, I think. Previously, Bob Dylan held that title. In 1961, when Blowing the Wind came out, the New York Times said, Mr. Dylan is the voice of his generation. And I think Trump has supplanted him. And in this Daddy's Home 2 universe, I can't stop thinking about Trump eventually doing his version of Blowing in the Wind on stage, where he's just like, how many roads? There's so many. It's a mad amount of roads. There's too many, I've always said, there's too many roads to walk down. To become a man. It's crazy. It's crazy how many roads there are. And the wind told me, said, Don, this many, exactly the, and the reason why I'm the great man and Hillary, crooked Hillary, is a woman is because she had no roads. No road Hillary is what I've always called her. It's blowing in the wind. It's, it's five. It's five roads in the wind. Only I can know. Like, it's such a fucking inevitability at this point. I have no, uh, like, I don't, I don't have many theories about Trump. I don't think he'll be impeached. I don't think he'll be indicted. He's too gelatinous to be shot effectively, I think. <laughs> but I think, I sincerely believe this. I think he would be, this is, I'm not, this is not even a fucking joke. I sincerely think he will be the first president to shit himself on live television. <laughs> uh, and like, it'll be imperceptible to the human eye. <laughs> Just a, like, a sh like a quick jet, but it'll definitely happen. I'll finish up on this note, right? In this Daddy's Home 2 universe, our daddies keep coming home and they're getting worse and worse and worse. And I don't think it's gonna get any better. After Woody Allen, Daddy's Home 4, Henry Kissinger's gonna play Woody Allen's dad. That's the way the world is heading right now, you know? And just like that boomerang I threw at the beginning of the gig, so very literal callback, on the nose, almost prop comedy. Terrible, terrible hack shit. Just like that metaphorical boomerang. You can either catch it, and throw it away again, or let it hit you in the face. Either way, it's gonna fucking suck in the end. Thank you very much, you've been very nice.